Today, my guest is Lilith Brockhaus, and uh, she is founder of Visual Makers and a big advocate for no code tools. Since many, or since this community, Data Plus Women, has uh, its root in Tableau, we, um, I also would like to talk about uh, Tableau as a no code tool. So, but first of all, welcome to Data Plus Women. Germany, Heidi Kalb and I have um, uh, created this community to just invite interesting people and uh, give a stage to especially interesting women. Um, everybody is welcome. It's data plus women, not data minus men. Um, and where we talk about just interesting topics by interesting people. So first of all, Tableau is a classical no-code tool. Instead of using JavaScript or um, other um, other uh, coding languages to build uh, data analytical interfaces, we're using drag and drop. So, Lilith, um, what what is a no-code tool? Could you explain that to somebody who has, you know, just known Tableau and nothing else, and sure. um, is new to that? So uh, first of all, let me say that no code is probably the wrong word because mm -hmm. it's the term right now and I love it because it's so easy, you know, but technically no code doesn't mean no code, right? Mm -hmm. There's still code behind it, but if you don't want to, you never have to touch it or interact with it. Mm -hmm. So when you think of no code, you could think in really simple explanation of a PowerPoint presentation, mm -hmm. but you don't build a PowerPoint presentation, but an app or an automation or so. Mm -hmm. So you have these drag and drop builders. They can be really simple. And the more simple they are, the more, the less um, in, yeah, individualizable, if you say so, they are, or customizable is probably the right word. Um, but uh, you you really get up to speed. So it's really fast building with them and really easy to learn. And then there are no code tools, which are more kind of into the, the low code department mm -hmm. um, where they are more complex, more technical, but you also have more freedom to customize them to, to your needs. Um, but I would say in general, no code means visual programming. So there's a layer between the code and mm -hmm the what you're interacting with so it's a visual interface that um, makes software building more accessible so in what kind of um, areas do we find no code tools today or, or yeah. we have uh, data analytics like tableau but what else um so yeah we have the the databases the visual databases or data yeah. analytics then we have a uh, website so, builders. wait so no sql anymore no well the base of that is still often um, SQL. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we also have not only relational databases, but also vector databases and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it can get really complex, but in general, we have the topic of, I would say just databases, visual databases mm -hmm. in no code. Um, then we have um, website builders um, mm -hmm. like, mm, you might know uh, Webflow or Jimdo or Wix or, or something mm -hmm. like that, Squarespace. Um, then we have the web app builders, mm -hmm. uh, something like Softer, uh, Bubble.io or, or mm -hmm. WeWeb. Um, then we have automation tools um, mm -hmm. like Make or Zapier or N8M or so. Um, and I would say these are the main main topics kind of or the main uh, categories that we have in no code but we have also a lot of tools who do something really specifically really good by mm -hmm. example um managing memberships or mm -hmm. um managing authentication for a platform or payment providers or chatbots or so so um no code can also be used in combination with custom code or with mm -hmm. other other no code tools um so they are really modular um and and so it's really flexible to to work with them i have read through some of your case studies on uh, the visual makers website quick note here visual makers is the company that Lilith and her co-founder founded and it's um, an agency training uh 
yeah, training provider and also community about all about no code tools. And what I read there is that oftentimes you use um, several no code tools who you then link together. So Lilith, could you give me like an example of the biggest no code project versus the smallest no code project that you yourself have has have worked on in your agency just to illustrate to our listeners um, what you can actually do with it. Yeah, uh, happy to. So um, maybe starting with the smallest is a two step automation. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it's an automation where I automatically um, save the attachments from my Gmail um, mm -hmm. account uh, in a certain folder to send it to our accounting platform. Um, so it's about invoicing uh, invoices that I send automatically to uh, to our accounting tool instead of searching uh, through every email and and manually saving them and uploading them. Mm -hmm. So that's a really simple step, which is built up in like three minutes uh, or so and saves me a lot of time mm -hmm. um, uh, in the week. Ah, and interesting. So you don't only have to be a company to use it, but you can use it in your day to day life like everybody. Yeah. Everybody can uh, can use no code tools to just optimize everyday workflows. Yes, yes, exactly. Also, what you have uh, on your phone um, recently. So, if you have a smart home at home um, with these shortcuts on on iPhone, by example, these are kind of no code tools as well uh, because mm -hmm. you build an automation uh, for your private life, kind of. But you never mm -hmm. have to touch the code. But you just kind of click around and build your automation. So that would be one too. Um, and the cl most complex thing that we build um, is we're right now we're building a no-code tool in a no-code tool. Um, mm -hmm. So it's about um, driving or, or conducting data-driven experiments. Um, mm -hmm. So it's about a, um, a kind of tool where you build a prototype and then you can send your customers on there and then you have a heat map like where do customers click um how do they approach kind of how, how do they interact with your with your tool to find out like okay what mm -hmm. is the best ui ux well, how do lovely um how do processes work mm -hmm. within that prototype um so that's mm -hmm. about data-driven experiments um mm -hmm. but we also have uh, by example an, an app in the kind of waste management business uh mm -hmm. for a big enterprise in uh, north of, of germany we have built an app where you can say as a customer, hey, I have some uh, recycling waste, um, mm -hmm. kind of like clothes or uh, electronic devices mm -hmm. or so. And then you can uh, choose an appointment and then all the kind of in the back end, um, you have also an app for the drivers that kind of mm -hmm. um, you have a route planning uh, and so mm -hmm. on. So um, that's also one of the cases that, by example, that we do. So can get quite big and, and quite complex. What stands out to me about no-code tools is that it seems like you just have to have the idea and some technical expertise, or, or I would say some technical understanding of how that idea would work out. And then you can actually build it without learning, you know, Java, without learning Python. So without going into very technical depths, but rather staying on that uh, level where you have the architecture and the elements that need to work together and you actually don't need a developer like you can be the developer um, and I, I love that about the tool because I myself I uh, cannot code and uh, I've always wanted to learn it but somehow I have this inhibition um, it's not been easy for me to start a learning journey but I do have a very good technical understanding, especially of data, databases, and workflows. And uh, I believe that I naturally take to visual interfaces like I did to Tableau um, because I know what I want to do, but um, it's really hard for me to just work with these words that are syntax highlighted, but it's, it's just not how my brain works. I feel like that tools using a graphical interface are much more, psychologically fitted to to people what do you think about that yeah i definitely totally agree so me myself i don't have a technical background um i i couldn't even do 
properly Excel uh, when I started kind of my my career and Same. no code was uh, <laughs> no code was my way into tech and with no code I learned like how is a database structured how um, what is an API what is data anyway what's the difference between structured data and unstructured data um, how can I build um, an architect architecture that serves my my tool that I want to build right uh, because for no code, they are the, the same principles as they are for code. Because if you have a shitty database structure, then you will have a slow app and your your um, performance will be down. But if you, because these tools are visual and so accessible, you learn much faster and it's easier to understand. It's not as frustrating um, as yes. code. And it also takes not that long um, as to, to write code. And it's much more flexible, not only in terms of how fast you can build with it, but also who can access it. Because, I mean, it's we hard. already have a huge shortage of IT workers um, and that will increase um, in, in the next four years, uh, next next few years dramatically. And if you don't have the option, like also to, to have people in the different departments or also people without the developer um, degree, Mm -hmm. or, or training to access these tools and to build and to, to automate processes and to build internal tools and to build even products then that that drives efficiency like to to really next level and innovation as well so yeah, yeah. Lilith what I'm thinking about like I try to like um, put myself in the shoes of a company and imagine like using these tools to build my product what some of the fears I would have is that um what if um the tool i don't know goes broke or is bought by some other company is can i lose uh, everything i have built or can i like export the code and um yeah i go, go back to to coding or or yeah that would be yeah. a risk that i would think about if i would decide for no code tools yeah so in general, you can decide for a no-code tool as you would for any other SaaS tool as well. So you have to look out for certificates. You have to, to look out for the things you need to have to be GDPR compliant, to be secure, to be um, stable enough, right? So um, we have on our website, we have uh, a tool directory where we um, where we tell you the tools like how are they doing um, data protection, how are they doing security, what certificates do they have, and so on. Um, and these tools are getting better and better with that. Also, user management and and access restricts and and so on. So that's a big topic. Um, and in general, you can say in, in some tools you can export the code. Not all of them. That depends a little bit on on the tool. Mm -hmm. But it's still even if you export it it's in the framework, right? It's in the in the framework of the tool uh, build. So mm -hmm. you can just use the code and and build yeah. with that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, uh, to be honest, um, yes. but it's possible. So, and also we had that happen a few times, like that tools were bought. Um, mm -hmm. And usually it's like with any other SaaS tool um, that you still be able to access the tool to work with it um, and also not have that big change in pricing and so on. So just for our listeners, uh, SaaS means software as a service and it describes that you do no longer buy for hundreds of dollars, uh, you know, for example, like earlier uh, Microsoft, but that you have a subscription based model that you pay monthly and when you no longer want to use it, you stop paying. And that also encompasses that updates and security is all managed for you and you don't need the resources or expertise to keep your tool up to date and safe. So um, as we heard, uh, no code is a software as a service solution. So it's fully managed. And um, that way, it's, I think, so when I like listen to it, I think it's very attractive for, for startups or for uh, innovation labs where people um, need to build something fast and, uh, and, and, and test it out in, in real life. Is that something that a use case that you um, meet often? 
Yeah, definitely. We we built that in our agency with partners to together, um, like innovation pro, um, projects, prototypes, MVPs, but also fully fledged products. So it depends a bit on the use case, but you're always faster with no code than you are with code. Um, and that's why it's so great to test things because you never know, right? You have a hypothesis and then you need to test it uh, to see if yes. you're if you're right, right? You you have to validate your thoughts and your hypothesis. So um, that's what no code is really great for as well. So I would say in general, um, product building, like also prototypes, MVPs, but not only that, you can also build fully fledged products with that. Um, then you have the automation part and the internal tooling part. Um, so I would say these are the three main use cases for no code. I realize that I'm really fascinated and I would love to go into like specific detail, but there's another entire topic that um, I really want to talk about. And that is uh, no code tools um, for career changers or just generally as a job option and something that whether you are in tech already or tech adjacent or not in tech and would like to go into tech, um, what kind of chances does it provide? So I looked at your um, at the Visual Makers website, and I saw that you have an academy and also a community. So I would love to know more about, you know, um, about the um, community. Maybe we'll just start with the community, but. Sure. I have so many questions. <laughs> uh, so the community is one thing that we what, that we want to put more focus on in the future. Right now, it's a Slack workspace where um, we provide knowledge about um, new tools, updates, and so on. People can ask questions. We have um, more than six hundred or seven hundred makers now in there. Uh, it's all German. Um, it's a German community. Is it German speaking? Um, it's German speaking, yes. All right. We have also some, I, I mean, everybody in there understands also English, but most of the mm -hmm. posts are, are in German right now. Yes. Um, but um, so there you can exchange with other makers, um, um, look up tools uh, and mm -hmm. so on. So uh, it's a really thriving community. It really uh, is a lot of fun to, to see the questions that people have and other people from the community are answering and so on. So that's really cool. And it's so easy to get into something when you have a supportive community. I mean, that's yeah. like the thing with Tableau, right? One of the things that made me transition into Tableau so successfully is the community. And it's so strong that we even organized a 250 people uh, event in Berlin uh, last week. So yeah, I'm so happy that you say that there's like this community. I'm sure that's really great for people, you know, going into it, growing into it. Love yeah. that. I love that. To be honest, I never experienced such a supportive community as the no code community. Either I mean, if it's in our community or on Twitter or or Twitter, not so much anymore because they are all <laughs> automated bots and so on. But um, it's a because you you're so fast to learn and it's so mind blowing what you can do even as a non technical person everybody likes to share and see like hey I built this and I built that and everybody else is like oh that's so cool can you show me how and it's a cool. really there's I never experienced like an, a community where there's so little competition but really yes. supporting each other and um and really being curious about each other. So wow. no code has from a mindset perspective, a lot to do with experimenting it, with being curious, with being open uh, to, to learn and kind of this willingness to lifelong learning, I would say mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing that makes this community so great and so, so approachable. Yes. It's lovely to hear that. So what uh, kind of advice do you have for people who are looking to transition into tech? Is learning no-code tools and applying to jobs who look for people with no-code tools the way, or is, it, or is there yeah. another way? Yeah. So to be honest, I think learning no-code tools, um, if it's automation or, or some web app builder tools and so on, is I think that's going to be one of the main skills that we have in the next 10 years or so that people are or companies are looking for in every department, to be honest, because in every department you have automation potential 
um, mm -hmm. if it's in HR and marketing and accounting, but also in product and, and software development. Um, so that's one thing. I think it always makes sense to learn how to no code. Um, okay. And if you want to dive deeper into tech, no code is a great way to start uh, because yeah. like I started with no code and learned from a completely non-technical -te perspective. Um, I learned the basic concepts of code and of software development. Then I started okay. um, a training as a software developer. Uh, and I also did it, uh, like I, I took it to an end, but uh, I was more interested in, in transforming ideas into, into products and automating stuff uh -huh. and so on. So I didn't continue it. I'm a quite a slow developer, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> so uh, not really going into that one, but um, it's a great, because I had the knowledge of no code, it was much easier for me to, to get into code as well um, and understand uh, the concepts and so on. So. For everyone who doesn't have a technical background and wants to get into tech, I would really recommend to to start with no code. So maybe you can compare it like if you can ski uh, on um, on snow, of course, you can easily learn how to ski on sand, like people ski on dunes, right? So it's like when you know the concepts or you know what's possible and you know how a, a database works or a automation works, it's much easier to um to then learn the language to uh to script it than when you have to learn the language and the concepts behind it as well yeah yeah definitely also i would like to mention your podcast um that you have it's on uh all the podcast platforms and um i really like uh the conversations you have with people and uh, the ideas some people uh, come up with. For example, one of your guests built, um, he was vegan and he was uh, on holiday in Portugal. And he just, all his friends were asking him for restaurants all the time. So he just said, okay, let's, let's just make an app of it. Uh, I thought that was a really fun and illustrative story that it enables us to be more techy in our everyday life. Yeah, yeah, I love that one as well. Actually, he's he's one of our employees and he's uh, he's doing um, he's also doing our no code fundamentals course. So we have a, mm -hmm. he has a, a great humor. And so it's really fun to, to go through that course. Um, so that's how I would also recommend, like if you want to start with no code, uh, check out our no code fundamentals course. But uh, he built that app, like the restaurant app, and he also built one. We, he was looking for a flat in Lisbon um, yes. um, in just some time ago, and he built um, kind of for the three of them. They, he built also kind of an app for an overview, like to to manage the flat searching process. And we all know how um, how yeah, training that is. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's really really cool, and how fast even you can build that, right? So yeah. Yes. So uh, our time is coming to an end. It's important for us to uh, to finish on time so people can finish their lunch and we can start ours. Mm -hmm. So um, the Academy with Visual Makers has uh, especially uh, courses for Linux, Make, and Bubble. And um, yes, if you're curious, uh, do check it out. And uh, of course, the community, that sounds wonderful. Um, I have to listen to the podcast about art and no code tools um, because, you know, I used to be an artist, still very active. Uh, I'm so curious. I can't wait. And uh, I'm really inspired that if I do ha ever have any free time left over to just build uh, to just build my own app. I do think that in future it will be more important for everybody to acquire certain IT and tech skills. And I think no code tools is the way to do it like tableau is a self-service tool so that's the whole idea and philosophy about it and um, yeah i think it's so fascinating i would love to talk uh, more about it and i would love to see more of it in my day-to-day -day life i'll certainly have it like on my radar now i'll, I'll probably realize much more where it is in use and um there's one more topic that we can't talk about now. I'm so impressed that you're a founder and uh, that you have your own company. I would have loved to elaborate on that a bit more because I think it's very admirable and uh, and I think that would have been a great benefit. But Lilith, time flies by 
it was amazing having you here. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, thank you so much I for having me. Hope you have great success in the future. And uh, yeah, no code tools for the win, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you too. So uh, have a good lunch and uh, good rest of the week. Goodbye. Goodbye.